Hello my friends, in this video we'll be taking a look at the autosomal DNA and uh, predicted phenotype and GED match of a Eastern hunter-gatherer from Yuzhny Aleni Ostrov, which translates from Russian into uh, South Reindeer Island. This island is located in Karelia. I think it's on uh, the um, Onega Lake. I think it's the Onega Lake. A uh, very huge lake that's located in Karelia. So this is a woman. Her Y DNA is, is uh, well, she doesn't have a Y DNA because she's doesn't have a Y chromosome. But she is a woman. Her mitochondrial DNA is R1B, which has got me confused because R1B sounds like a Y DNA. But no, uh, this is apparently a mitochondrial lineage called R1B that I wasn't aware of until now. So her mitochondrial haplogroup is R1B, and let's get into her traits. Right, so we're gonna start with phenotype. Uh, in terms of the phenotype, she's got, it looks like, light brown eyes and black hair and darker brown skin. Very interesting. So dark skin, she, uh, the skin color prediction is mostly, the, uh, the variants that contribute the most to this prediction are uh, variants in SLC45 and SLC24A5. So these are the variants that contribute the most to this prediction right here. Uh, and it looks like she's she's got dark skin. Uh, in terms of the eye color, uh, it does surprise me a little bit that she's got such a high score for hazel eyes and green and blue eyes with a neighbor center, all these kind of light, light eye colors, but the largest category she scores is still light brown eyes. And by the way, there's something about this file that's very interesting, and then we're going to get into that a little bit later. So there's going to be a big discrepancy when you look at Nasha Kod results for this sample. Uh, versus the Okatun and uh, her 2 eye color estimator because when you look at the Okatun and her 2 eye color estimator it looks like she's got hazel or green eyes instead of dark brown and what's that's, that's really surprising to me because that tells me that she's got uh, derived variants she's got a lot of derived variants in the Okatun and her 2 region and we can scroll down to the very end and we can see that she's got blue eye haplotype 3 which is crazy because it's an Easter hunter gatherer, how does she have blue eye haplotype three when she's an Easter hunter gatherer? She's not genotyped for the main variation uh, in blue eye haplotype two, but we pretty much know for a fact that she's got BEH two because she's got BEH three, and she's got this genotype as well, which which um, predict is predictive of BEH two. So she's got this genotype right here that's predictive of blue eye haplotype two, and she's also got blue eye haplotype three. Uh, she's got blue eye haplotype one as well. There you go. However, she does have two genotypes in Noka 2 and Herkutu region that we can see even from here, even from this little um, web page. We can see that she's got two genotypes that code for darker pigmentation in the Oka 2 and Herkutu region. So this, for example, genotype correlates with not having BH1, which we know she does have. And uh, this genotype correlates with not having BH2, although this is a um, a rather weaker correlation, not as strong of a correlation as this and BH1, but uh, still there is a couple genotypes that she has in this region that are predictive of darker eye color. Despite this, uh, keep in mind that she has blue eye haplotype 3, which is like extremely, extremely important. So yeah, chances are she's got, she's got light brown eyes. When you take everything into account, uh, her prediction is to have light brown eyes, but she definitely has in her genetics some variants for lighter eye colors, such as you know green or blue with amber center or blue. Um, I kind of skipped over the hair color part. So for the hair color estimator, the biggest percentage is black hair, but followed by that is actually dark blonde hair. Interesting. So she's got uh, typically you would see black hair number one, brown hair number two, dark blonde number three. In her case. The way the statistics play out, number two for her is actually dark blonde hair instead of brown hair. All right. Now we're going to go ahead and look at her polygenic risk scores. For the polygenic risk scores, she's got below average odds of schizophrenia, uh, pretty much average, maybe slightly below average odds of type 2 diabetes, uh, pretty much average, maybe slightly below average odds of Alzheimer's. She has two risk variants for breast cancer out of six, which is just an absolutely incredible. Um, 
I think I'm gonna look at I look at the actual result and see what kind of variants those are. But two risk variants out of six for breast cancer is uh, uncommon, definitely uncommon. And she's got six risk variants for testicular cancer out of six. Once again, super uncommon. So uh, definitely high predisposition to testicular cancer. Although that's not gonna matter in her case because she is a woman. All right. She has AA in Comte's Valmet variation. Great, so she's got Warrior genotype in Comte. Also Warrior genotype in MOUA, so she's very Warrior. Definitely um, <coughs> very slow reuptake of dopamine, a lot of dopamine accumulation in the system. Um, you know, and advantages in memory and attention tasks, disadvantages when it comes to stress resiliency, that needs to be said. When it comes to the no-go learner variation, she's got AG genotype, so intermediate or heterozygous genotype. Um, does not have the A1 allele or A1, yeah, the A allele in TAC1 doesn't have that one. So she's got typical genotype for most humans leading to a slightly higher number of dopamine D2 receptor sites in the brain and slightly lower risk of stuff like ADHD and alcoholism, basically typical normal genotype. Uh, in case you aren't familiar with what the TAC1 variation is, the A allele basically decreases the availability of dopamine D2 receptor sites in the brain by 20% for every A allele. In her case, she's got normal genotype, typical human genotype, nothing to worry about. Um, she does not have long form 5 HTCLPR. Once again, we got we got short form 5 HTCLPR. Uh, does not have a decrease in risk of depression. Got slightly higher odds of depression. This is once again a genotype that's very typical for pretty much everybody. But in Europe, there is um, a small percentage of people who have a long form 5 HTCLPR. Me, I'm a part of that percentage, but it's it's a very long long form 5 HTCLPR is a very European genotype to have, but she doesn't have it. When it comes to the European lactose persistence mutation, once again, that's a super European genotype to have, but she doesn't have any. She doesn't have any European lactose persistence variants. For OXTR and the empathy gene, um, two sociopath variants for reduced OXTR expression. Uh, two variants for lower levels of empathy and once again two sociopath variants. It looks like she's got the sociopath gene It looks like she's got a lot of variants for less empathy uh, reduced OXTR expression for diabetes um, Okay, so she's got an increase in the risk of type 1 diabetes. That's very interesting uh, That's kind of a rare genotype. The A allele here is super rare. So relative to the opposite genotype This is this is a seven-fold increase in the risk of type 1 diabetes very significant genotype. Um, slightly decreased odds of Alzheimer's, good for her. Non-genotype for the main variants for Alzheimer's in APOE. Uh, for myopia, well, we don't really care about that. No micro P, you know what that is. Mix of muscle types, likely more sprinter rather than endurance athlete. Uh, likely does not have photic sneeze reflex, but I... I don't know if that says much because I also likely don't have photic sneeze reflex, even though uh, I definitely do have it in reality. And when it comes to her genotype in the EDAR, no shovel shipped incisors and not East Asian in ancestry. There you go. Okay. Uh, for albinism, she's not a carrier of any of the albinism mutations that were found in the file. Uh, unfortunately, these eight weren't found. We're not simply were simply not in the file. For familiar Mediterranean fever, she's got, it looks like, no risk variance for that. For MTHFR, okay, so she's got this genotype right here in MTHFR, which leads to 10 to 20% efficiency in processing folic acid. So, very impaired uh, processing of folic acid. Uh, low B12 and folate levels, and it leads to a higher variety, a higher variety, odds, higher odds for a variety of illnesses from autism to coronary heart disease. All right. Now for the cancer panel, it looks like the breast cancer risk variants are here. Now this is not so concerning because uh, risk variants in this variation, from my memory, and I was just doing this panel like like yesterday, from my memory, this particular variation, the risk variant is not that uncommon. Okay, and for the leukemia panel, it looks like she's got above average odds of leukemia in this variation. And this is like the most important variation here. All right. Well, that's pretty much all there is to it. Now we're going to go ahead and look at... This is what she scores with uh, Eurogene Skate 13. As you can see, she's scoring 55% Baltic. Uh, what's interesting, 
about this result is she's scoring 8.3% South Asian and that's of course due to the uh, affinities that existed between ancient North Eurasians and South, South Asia like more on South Asians and ancient North Eurasians and this is a category that's based on allele frequencies of modern South Asians, right? So, uh, ancient North Eurasians did resemble South Asians quite quite a lot, is what I'm trying to say here. And with the Oracle, she's getting modeled as a mixture of Lithuanian plus various, I don't know, various, like, Native American groups, I guess. Okay. And uh, this is what she scores with Harappa World. This is probably the last calculator I'm going to show you here. With Harappa World, she is scoring mostly Northeast European, but there is 12.5% uh, Baloch. So, once again, she's scoring a little bit of Baloch here. That's due to the affinities that existed between ancient North Eurasians and, by extension, Eastern hunter-gatherers and South Central Asians, such as Baloch and, you know, various people of North India and uh, Southwestern Asia. Uh, I actually kind of expected a little bit more Baloch here, but it looks like there's only 12.6%. And she's closest to Russians, Lithuanians, Finnish people. Actually, Finnish people come third. That's very interesting. I think the reason Finnish people come third is because uh, there's very little Northeast European. Like, Finnish people tend to score more Northeast European. They don't score any Baloch. And, I've, I've, and I think um, another difference is that they score Mediterranean, which this uh, Yuzhnel in Yostrov woman doesn't score any. So there's some differences. It's not exactly like a Northeast European, but it's it's more like a very extreme population that's um, ancestral to some Northeast Europeans. In case you don't know what kind of, what the, the genesis of Eastern hunter-gatherers Hunter -gatherer, Hunter is, it's a mixture of ancient North Eurasians and Western hunter-gatherers, or like a mixture of ancient North Eurasians plus something something that was hunting and gathering in Europe. Uh, well, that's pretty much all there is to it. Thanks for watching until the end. You can download this file in 23andMe format from link which is in the description of the video. And um, leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy my content. Goodbye.